Uh, okay, I'm not gonna get nobody to catch that because some of y'all tired from this morning. But and all y'all doing is watching, but I've been doing all the talking. But look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor and say, God already have a program. Oh, yeah. And the program is going to develop champions. champions. All right, watch this, y'all miss this. We are in the season, we're in the season of the Super Bowl. Yeah. Which is next Sunday. And I wish I had somebody in here that can make it up in their mind and know that the next thing that I do is going to be amazing. Yeah. All right, look at somebody and tell them, say the next thing that's coming up out of me, the next thing that I do, the next thing that I say, it's going to be amazing. Lord, I wish I had somebody to help me right there. Now, look at somebody and tell them and say, if you can't be amazing with me, then you got to get out of my way. Because tell them, say, amazing is all around me. Watch this. Watch this, watch this. Mother, I talked about a tree this morning. All right, and I'm not gonna go back to that story because I teach people, stop bringing message to people that you gave to somebody else. But today, I wanna talk about the Ecclesia. The call out. Right, so we're gonna be doing this luncheon of a power not, right? Right, right? Okay, yeah, I ain't doing enough people to say that. I'm gonna have a truth that I'm crazy. We, we lunch and watch him. This is not about Apostle Juan Bello. This is about Apostle Juan Bello, Bishop Terrence Bailey, Pastor Mary Daniel Duffy. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. Pastor Ryan, come on, y'all ain't saying nothing here. Pastor Will, why? Because God is connecting real men to come together and real women to come together. Y'all ain't saying nothing that can cause a move of God because God is sick and tired of people starting and stopping, starting and quitting. Come on here, somebody. Look at your neighbors and put your hands to the plow and work while it's day. Listen, this is not the season and I decree that Terrence Bailey watches I can I don't have to decree to Bishop Bailey because I gave him the consecration. But Mother Bailey and his daddy gave him Terrence Bailey. So I'm gonna talk to Terrence Bailey today and tell him quit is not an option. One way or the other, Terrence Bailey got to make the north side be developed. You got 10 months, I'm going to wrestle with you for 10 months, because 10 months is a month of development. A woman that had a baby for 9 months, in you know, the ninth month and the second week, it's time to push that bear out. Look at your neighbor and say, we got 9 more months, and barely got to push this baby out. Oh, come on, come on, tell somebody, you got to push it, push it. Push, when you're pushing, P-U-S-H. Pray until something happens. Praise until something happens. Prophesy until something happens. Are y'all listening to me? God is trying to get you to a place to develop you. Come on, tell your neighbor, say, God's trying to get me to a place to be developed. Now, now, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, Pastor Will, watch this. It's because, this is what the Lord said, I looked across the table at you, and the Lord said, challenge him in this season, that what he sows into your life, he said, when, he get, when I get through of making him empty, sowing into your life, one, I am going to cause his launching to be so great wow. and so phenomenal wow. that it's going to make others angry because they couldn't do it in the kitchen. All right, so watch this. So as I say today, as an apostle in the Lord's church, I'm saying to Terrence Bailey that the years you have sown, I can't prophesy about Apostle Bailey because she went to sleep, but the years you have sown in my life in these 10 years, God says, I'm getting ready because you're about to be empty of sowing. But God said, the reason why you've been stagnated like you've been because you're not empty yet. Lord, I wish I had somebody talk back to me in this black church. But God said, what I'm about to do is I'm about to set up a ecclesia order in the lives of leaders. He said, Ron, I'm calling you to open up the ecclesia order in the minds of my people. Why? Because the word of the Lord says, the race is not given to the swift, neither the battle to the strong, but to those that endure. I need a fast somebody to open up your mouth and say, we got to endure. Watch this. 
listen. All right. Little sis, little Olivia, and this year I've been pastoring, preaching for 32 years. This year I've been pastoring for 31 years. Watch this, watch this. God says, I'm using you one in this season of pastorium as you're crossing over to a new anniversary come June the 26th. By the time June get here, Apile South and North, glory to God, is getting ready to be impacted in a way. Because God told me, he said, you have passed the place and the area where the light come on. It might go psychologically, Sister Juanita, psychologically. Psychologists will tell you when you get 30 years old, the light come on. I can't get no help. So 30 years we've been in the ministry. 30 years I've been preaching. 31 years I've been passing. But June the 26th, we'll make it go to God. Of 1986, it will make it 32 years and 31. Look at your neighbor and tell them, tell them that's even more days in a month. February is 28 days. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I've already beat February. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You do the calculation. How long you been saved? Okay. Yes, Lord. Well, you pray to been saved all your life because you don't know no sin. You know. He a priest. He a priest. He, he, he don't know me. But, but, but watch this. Some of y'all been saved longer than 28 right. years. Right. Okay, so February is not an issue month for you. Because yeah. I only have 28, 70 yeah. months, sometimes 29. All right. right? Okay, now let's go back. Some of us in here, only person, but, uh, 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 Mike, Mike, you 29 yet? Yeah, you're 29. You're 29. All right, then, huh? About 10 years. you 29? Yeah. All right, that's what I asked. All right, Pearl, how old are you? 35. I keep thinking Pearl about 19 years old. I don't know why. I keep forgetting the chief was already 15 when he came to me. Then when you get old, you need to get off the mother's boat because you ain't a mother yet. You need to go on the preacher's boat to get out of here. But watch this. Glory to God. Let me hear you with something. Watch this. Nick is only 22. Uh, Whitney, how old are you? Next week, next week, watch it. All right, watch it. Nikki, Whitney, uh, uh, Tyson, Taylor, and my baby Nicole, uh, Zay. Mm. We ain't talking to y'all. February, you have not outlived out February. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But everybody else, that, that number is above 29. Uh -huh. You have outlived the month of February. Uh -huh. All right, for all of us that's in the 40s, we have already outlived women. Everybody that's 32 years old and up, you have outlived every month that have a day. Because uh -huh. they got one month that got 32 days in it. So look at your neighbors have already outlived the days in the months. Glory God ain't helping me right about here. Now what God says, your challenge is now the seconds. Because you got 60 seconds in a minute. A minutes, you got 60 minutes in a hour. But watch this, can I help you? You may not outlive, watch this, Mother Cotilla, Mother Barry, my mama's back there. Y'all have outlived Phyllis, have outlived uh, Sandra, have outlived Seconds right. and minutes right. and hours. I know. Right. <laughs> if I give seconds to make minutes, six seconds to make minutes, six minutes to make an hour. Right? Then you've already outlived how many hours to make a day? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's what I can play all of And you've already outlived the months in a year. Yes, Lord. I'm trying to show y'all something. In other words, if you've already survived the 12 months yes, system, yeah. you've already survived the seven day a week yes, system. You've already survived the 60 seconds, the 60 minutes, and the 24 hours. God said nothing else can stop you from surviving because you've already survived too much. the year of the survivors that is coming out. Watch this. Open up your mouth and say, I survived it. Now I'm graduating because I'm becoming a conqueror. I can't get nobody to help me right there. If you conquer, Sister Walifia, if you conquer the days, the seconds, the minutes, the hours, the months, the week, it's nothing that the enemy can stop you from conquering because every day when you wake up, you're outnumbered the system that makes the day. Yeah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm trying to find my church, right? Okay. Yes, God. This, this is, I feel it right here. Okay. <laughs> right. This is 24 hours.
hours in the day, I'm older than 24. Yep. There's seven days in the week, I'm older than oh, that. Yeah. It's, it's, see, I'm not older than 60 oh, seconds to make a minute. I'm not older than a minute to make a minute. A second to make a minute, minutes to make an hour. I'm not. But if you calculate how many hours in a day, I'm older than that. How many days a week, I'm older than that. How many months of the year, I'm older than that. So if I got that much that I've already conquered, all the others, I will conquer. Yeah. Because conquering is in my system. Surviving is in my system. Okay, y'all don't believe me. All right, Jeremiah 29 and 11 said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. The thought of peace, good, not evil, but it has an unexpected end. So tell your neighbors, and what I did not count, uh, what I did not conquer, God is expecting me to do it. So I guess when I'm on my march, get set and I'm conquering. But God ain't saying nothing. Look at your neighbor and say, when I do not conquer, or when I have not conquer, on your march, get set, start conquering. Watch this. Watch this. Jeremiah says, I know my thoughts. Uh-huh. All right, all right. John 15 and 15. Uh-huh. Now, now, John 15 and 15. I'm going to show you something and then, and then we'll dance. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm going to show you something and then I'm going to dance. Uh-huh. It's over there. I'm going to show you something and then I'm going to dance. Uh, Angie, you ready to go? Oh, because you had to dance with me too. Uh, watch this. Me and Wanithia and Angel and all the dancers. We're going to dance. Amen. We're going to dance. Because let me tell you why we're going to dance. Because you don't know what God just set you up for. My God. If God opens a door and there is a problem with you financing the door, then if God did, he got to give me the lead. Yes. Jeremiah. Amen. So you got it? Jeremiah 15 and, and 15. I mean, uh, John 15 and 15. Henceforth, I call you not servants, uh-huh. but the servant knoweth not what Turn it on, baby. John 15 and 15 says, Henceforth, I call you not servants. Watch this. He said, I call you not servants, but... For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. Wait, wait, wait. Because servants... I want you to graduate a power not from being a servant to people. Okay. And become a time understander of God. Right. Yeah. My we God. I messed up. I done messed up. Y'all done shipped me. Ship me to a whole nother place already. Oh, we have been serving people. Uh-huh. My Lord. We have been serving people uh-huh. and missing the timing my of Lord. God. Oh, my Lord. Because people have the serving skills out on the ability for us to serve them. Everything. The banquet is out for us to serve. Uh-huh. But ain't nobody coming to the banquet. Yeah. Oh, you remember when the king got near the banquet? Yeah. You remember the king made a banquet? Yeah. And, the, and, the, and he called and all the elite says, what? The elite says, they said, we, we busy. Uh, the Super Bowl is on. We, 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 we clean our car. Uh, uh, we on our way shopping uh, or whatever. So they could not come. So what did the banquet, the, the king tell the host? He said, go out in the city and find everybody. Everybody that is available. Oh, y'all just missed that. Find everybody that is available. I'm trying to find an available person today. Because the moment you are available, you become accountable. And if you're accountable, you become available. He says, go find somebody that is available. And they came, right? They came. Yes, sir. So when he came, what did God do? He fixed him to come to the banquet. Y'all just missed what I just said. They didn't come to the banquet like they were. Or whenever you become available, God steps in your availability and he starts designing you and trusting you and fixing you. Watch, I'm going to show you in Isaiah 61 what I'm talking about. He said the moment you become available is for the building the kingdom of God is the moment that I start causing you to be accountable to the availability that you are available for. And the moment you become available and then you become a, a kind of accountable, then I'm responsible to handle everything that's heavy in your life. He says, so I, I call you not service, servant, come on. Know it not, man. Uh-huh. Servant, know it not what his Lord do it. Because a servant don't know what his Lord's doing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's good to serve people. Uh-huh. But God wants us to step out of being a servant of people. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. And 
become a hearer of him. Yeah. Mm. It's more, Mother Betty, than us come together and raising thousand dollar lives. Yeah. We bring in people in to do revivals, and we bring in people in to steal money from us. We bring in people in, and then once y'all have sold all your money, these booger bands and these these hood rats, they get up and they go out there and do whatever they want to do, and then we see them in blogs without money. We see them in we would, And what happens is now we have gave our pearls to the Ryan. Now watch this, Pastor Will. I want you to take, take notes, Pastor Ryan Will, Pastor right. Will, Pastor Bishop Bailey. I need y'all to take notes of what I'm about to say. When you give your purses, don't let people, Sister Lord, want me to hear. Mama, mother, uh, Bailey, mother, uh, Taylor, let me tell you something, son. You don't let people tell you that don't worry about the person that you saw in it to. Uh, and mm. whatnot. Uh, just go ahead and sow it and God go fix it. See, that's a church lie. That's right. That's a church lie. Yeah. Let, no, no. Because if you're a low down, trifling, dirty dog, why am I giving my kingdom money to a dog? Yeah. Right. Oh, come on. Uh, if, if you're not good for nothing, why am I giving my kingdom money to you? Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, watch this. Watch it. Because the scripture says, cast not your pearls to the swamp. Lest they trample over them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you do not get a harvest back because you gave your seed to somebody that's inappropriating God's money. Yeah. 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 See, see, we was fooled one time, but we ain't gonna be fooled no more. No. Come on, tell your neighbor, look at real your neighbor and say, no, bite me one time, shame on you. Bite me two times, shame on you again. Yeah. Because I'm gonna bite back. Come on. Come on, watch this. So the enemy job is, is to make us become so manipulated and intimidate us with our pocketbooks, but our future will never receive the harvest because we sowed our seeds in the wrong ground. So a lot of churches, a Mother Billy, that's closing down, or a lot of churches that people are giving up, and a lot of pastors that's committing suicide. Watch this, um, uh, uh, Apostle Tanya Mitchell. My God, Thursday night, that woman brought the dogs up in Jacksonville. Watch this, she had a list of how many pastors had committed suicide. She had a, a list of how many pastors that had uh, extramarital affairs and whatnot, and etc. And she was naming their names and their churches. It was over 30 something churches right in the state of Florida alone. Don't even say nothing here. But today I was talking about that fruit, that tree that don't bear it, no fruit. It's going to be cast down. Glory to God. So guess what? The suicide that that preacher has done. We can pray all day, y'all, and every day for the preacher that's committing suicide or the preacher that's falling away from God. But the problem is, if you're not in the tree of God or you're not in the righteousness of God, you're going to be cast down anyway. Watch this. It's a difference wow. when it is a mistake. Wow. Okay. Some things are not mistakes, they become lifestyles. Wow. Are you hearing me? Yeah. And if it's a lifestyle, if grace cannot work for you when you know to do good, but you choose to do wrong. Yeah. 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 Oh my God. Listen, I can't wake up and commit wake up with plan and intentional sin on my mind. And then go out there and come back and say, God, forgive me. No, 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 come on. Come on now. Come on now. now watch this. His grace may not never let you die in the mystery, so you're gonna thank him for that. But the repercussion of what you're sowing, you got to reap the harvest. Are you hearing me? We got too many people. We got too many people that want to sow seeds in the ground and in the earth, but they don't want it. They're not expecting the harvest to come. Right. If you so bad, if I so bad to you, if I destroy your life, if I destroy your son, and by the way, how your son doing? Tell that booger ass son. If, if I destroy your son and your, your daughter and your marriage, and I don't come back and fix it. See, wow. true repentance don't say I'm sorry. Wow. See, when somebody tell me that they're sorry, I don't pay up no attention. Because I need their life. Because see, you're only sorry because you got caught. Wow. If, I, if I never have caught you, you would have been sorry. You are still doing the same thing. So sorry is just a sign of saying, I'm going to do it again, but right now you call me, oops, my bad. Right. That's really what sorry means. Sorry means I'm good for nothing, never been expected anything good to come out of me, and I will do it again when your back is turned. Now, watch this. How many people you know say they're sorry and look at it again and they're doing the same thing? Yeah. Yeah. 
Same thing when I saw it, but true repentance when I repent. Sister Bobbidia, then I come back and say, Sis, I know I hurt you. I know I damaged you. I know where you are right now. What can I do to fix the pain in your life? I'm scared of these sanctified so called wanna be church folks. They can do what they want to do. And when it gets time to fix stuff, you can't fix it. You know why? You should do stuff that you can't fix. If you're breaking, you should be able to fix it. If you steal it, you should be able to pay it back. And if you can't, they don't do it. Right. Right. Come on. Right. We're damaging people's lives. Yeah. Right. You you're the bishop, right. but you're dead in life. Yes, yeah. 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 You on the bishop because you know you can talk good. Your intellectual is good. Yeah. Your vernacular is perfect. You look like a bishop. But when the doors are closed, the lights are turned off. You ain't seen nothing yet. You drinking every gin that's on the bar. You sipping every sip that's in Las Vegas. You up the, the strolls picking up every cherry. You ain't talking to me. But if you're going to be a bishop, what is a bishop? A bishop is one that watches over the word to make sure that the word of God is being performed correctly. How are you going to be watching over the word and you're wronger than the people that you're watching? Yeah! We're starting something, Mama. We're starting stuff, sis. We're starting churches and we're building churches because we got good credit. Yeah. But no anointing. No. Churches, and none of my shy church don't last on your good credit. Because the moment you make one of them boogers back in the church and you got to pay the light bill, you got to take money out your pocket so you can't pay your credit card bill or your gas bill at home or your condo at home is not paid on time. You know what's going to happen? Your score going to start going down. Then what you going to do when everybody will walk off and leave you? But if you're going to build the church of God, you got to build it the way God said do it. Hold it and righteousness. Stop putting people in position that can't live sanctified, that can't live holy. You know that boy is a low down, dirty dog. Sit that boy down in the corner and tell you get sanctified. Watch this. Watch this. And then when you see the potentials, you see potentials. Come here. Come here. My God, move. Come here. I need y'all to start moving and pay attention to me. Pause. I need y'all to pay attention to me because I'm in a vein right now. This season, for some reason, I'm in a vein. That's and it. I don't need y'all to be goofy. That's it. I need y'all to pay attention at all times, especially the men. Jesus. Gotta pay attention, and y'all preachers gotta pay attention. That's it. Listen, listen. My brother might come in, and he come in, and I know he's struggling because I don't talk to him. See, that's what's wrong with us in the church. When the people join the church, I sit down and talk to the people. Yeah. yeah. You find with the people. You know, man of God, you know, I love you. So he gonna tell me, you know, you know, uh, PJ, a person, you know, Pastor Juan, you know, I'm going through this thing right here. And so I might see that, you know, the brother could be a good owner bearer for me. Yeah. That brother could be my good driver. But when he tell me he's struggling with his flesh, yeah. and my spirit is always open because I'm preaching, oh and I'm ministering the word of God, you ain't saying nothing here. I gotta be careful who I allow to call himself, drive me, usher me. Because now what I'm attached to becomes me. And I'm going say that even though I may not have ever fallen like he is falling. People will judge me by what they see. Yeah, yeah, an association can bring about contamination. Oh, you are hearing me? Now watch this, watch this. Because I'm living orally, with an orally life to the best of my ability. When they see you, they should be able to say, man, there's something about you. Even when your proclivities is still there. I can't get it. Nobody can talk to me right there. Even if your proclivities is still active, because you're under a powerful leader, somebody should be able to assist the oil that's on your life. The first thing they should see is the oil and not the proclivities. Watch this. Why? Because of attachments. Uh -huh. The downloading of the magic. Uh -huh. right. So he's sitting there. So my job is to brother, I need you to do something, but I want you to watch for me. And I want you to sit over there. Yes. Just sit over there. Sit over there. Uh -huh. See, see, see. Because he is not tuning in with me on the way. I pointed over there, which was the first seat. But he said in the seat that he thought I he thought I wanted him to sit in. And see, that's where the problem comes in, Pastor Will. Sometimes we got good intentions for people that we love. We got good intentions for people that we see. But because they're not spiritually inclined with you, they, when they see the pointing of the direction, but they don't see the end. So they say, let me sit somewhere in the vicinity of where he pointed at. Now, that don't make you wrong. That still make you in place of, 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 of improving. 
right? So 15 says, 16, 15 says, he says, uh, I, I call you not servant. Uh -huh. This year preaches, all y'all preachers of Akon, it's over with, it's over with. It's God wants you now longer to be a servant, yeah. but a champion. He wants us to win. He wants to be victorious. Watch this. Now, there's things that me and Pastor Will talk about. There's things me and Pastor Ryan and Pastor Will, I will talk to them about. There's some things that I talk to Minister Mike about that I've never had a conversation with Bishop Bill. Amen. All right, all right. Come Amen. on, man. Come on, man. Come on. There's some things that I will laugh and hear her with Lanisha that I won't do with Elsa. Amen. Come on, man. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Because the level of no, I can discuss things I talk to you with y'all about to Bishop Bill. Mm -hmm. Only reason why I chose not because of the title that's in the front of his name. Come on, yeah. Yeah. areas about me that you see, but there's some conversation I will never discuss because Tyler will say he can't I can't discuss it. Now, there's some things he's a pastor, he's a pastor. They're a pastor by titles. They're not pastors now yet by a uh, building or uh, uh, authoritation, if I can say that right. But right. that title is there. They're working those titles out, right? All, all right. So since they're working those titles out because he's already there and that bishop, there's some conversation I can't talk to about. There's some conversation I don't talk to Pastor Murray about. He's my son. We live in the same house. There's some stuff I just don't say. But me and Lady Andrew, we have the plum food. Yeah. <laughs> we have a plum good old chopping down. But there's some stuff I don't say because his title as a pastor operating in the realm that he operated prophetically and pastorally is a some stuff I don't say because he talked too much. He would not talk too much. He respond back too much. I just want you to shut up and just listen to me. Don't say nothing, Murray. In case you watch it. <laughs> but he will say, Pops, no, I love, hold up, hold up. Why? Because that pastor in him said, no, 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 uh-uh, mm -mm. no, 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 that shepherd said, no. So with him in bed, that's some stuff you know the king. I just go find your wives. <laughs> Come in, Alicia, girl. You... So she ain't going to say nothing. And you'll be like, you cry, damn it. Yeah, she just fall out on the floor. Right? Now, Elder, brother, uh, Mike, yeah, and, and Mike on your butt. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because Uncle Pastor. Mm -hmm. This is my niece. There's something I see. Everybody in my family came to ask me the honey kids. I said, Child, I don't know honey kids. I see her at church and on Tuesday night. I go see my mama. She said, Well, how's Nikki? I said, Mama, that's your granddaughter. I don't know. <laughs> but don't, I don't see her every day. No. I'm going to do a Facebook live and it's putting Nikki's face on it. I'm going to say, see this girl right here? If I ever see her, please tell her I'm looking for her. <laughs> Watch this. I don't talk to Nikki every day. I didn't tell her, I said, child, I don't talk to the girl every day. I see her at church. I see her on Tuesday night. If I need something, I pick up the phone and call her. Well, we be calling her, but she don't answer. I said, oh, well, now I don't know what to tell you. She hands the one I call. And do not call me and ask me to tell her to call you because I'm not doing it. Right, right. Because God will favor and grace you with an answer. And then God will take away the grace and favor from somebody else that needs an answer. And you ain't going to misuse my favor because you don't know how to get her to pick up the phone. But I'm her grandma. I'm oh, well, then I'm just her own. Because if she answer for me and don't answer for you, then the problem between you and her. <laughs> now, I know Nikki, Nikki don't dislike her, her grandmother or whatnot. But watch it. She just, she's 22 years old. Yeah. She's living her life. Yeah. Yeah. Like and yeah, like it's golden. And then secondly, she like her daddy. How y'all know her daddy and, 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 and want her to respond differently? Her daddy don't like nobody talking to him. So, hey, John, how you doing? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Hey, because you I'm doing fine. Okay, then just. Like her daddy. She didn't steal it. Her DNA is her makeup. You are mad because you laid it with somebody and got a child with that somebody, and now that child is your grandchild, and now you upset because that grandchild acting like their daddy. Oh, I, I just showed y'all something. See, everybody around you should be mad with you because you're acting like your dad. See, when you're acting like your daddy, then, and, and they don't know your daddy, then that's why they have a problem with you. But if they know your daddy, say, you know, child, that boy in church, that boy ain't something about y'all. One thing about the, you know, my family called me the Reverend. They say, you know one thing about the Reverend? Reverend ain't now all that foolishness, so y'all can stop going. So my auntie will pick up that phone. 
She probably watching right now. Pick up that phone. My auntie Kathy gonna pick up that phone and she'll call me and tell me everything that everybody's doing. Real, let me tell you right about now. Because I know they're gonna call you. <laughs> See, I already know. See, I already know. So when that phone's starting, I don't answer this because I already got it. <laughs> and I don't want to have to be deciphering on which one I'm gonna believe. Uh-huh. So I just choose the first one to call, it's the first one I'm gonna take <laughs> and then be And she always outbeat them. And they mad at her. She always calls, she always calls, never tell him, stop me, fine. She said, that's my mama. She said, you my child. I told my mother, I said, but I'm still her nephew. But you mine, I said, girl, bye. <laughs> she will beat them every time. I'm telling you, I, it didn't happen three days. Kathy will still beat them. Because you know why? Sister, what they do? They think about how they're going to tell it to me. To make me believe. And all she do is come and tell. But see, what they fail to believe, Mother, is she didn't just tell on them. She told on all of them, even her. She said, well, let me tell you what I said. You know, I should never say it. And I know you're going to tell me I should never say it, but I cuss them all out. She said, they're all working on my nerve. And she will tell. See, when they call, they won't tell on them. So they got to figure the story out. So I tell them, I'll stop trying to figure the story out. Just call as soon as it happened and tell me. But mind you, they're all older than me. They're all aunties and uncles, so why are y'all calling me? You the rare. I'm supposed to call you. No, call on Jesus. He has a prayer. That's it, sir. That's so, so when they be calling me, mama, and I say, uh, I'm going to call you right now. <laughs> so now that I drive the Uber, I'm driving. I'm okay, I'm coming back. Please, come back. Please. <laughs> when they keep up, I'm Uber. I'm on Uber. I'm Ubering. I'm on Uber. I'm on Uber. Two o'clock in the morning, car. Blue, I'm on Uber. My auntie said, What do you do Uber? I said, 24 hours a day. Seven days a week. Every time I don't feel like talking to y'all, I'm driving for Uber. Watch this. Watch this. But the dear God said, He said, You're not a servant. Come on. Tell somebody say, I'm graduating. Come on. No, it's not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. Is it turned on? Okay, come on. Read it again. Henceforth, I call you not servants. Uh, I call you not servant. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord is. Because a servant don't know what his Lord is doing. Uh-huh. Read. But I have called you friends. Uh-huh. Wait a minute. That's the part I want to get to. I'm tired. Because, you know, friends, we have certain conversations. We intimate in certain ways. Uh-huh. You know, we're not talking about the booty intimate. We're talking about, you know, intimate in conversations right. and trust. Uh-huh. We're intimate in certain ways. We can say certain stuff to each other. Right. Real friends. Uh-huh. Now, Lanisha and I uh, uh, has been friends for a minute. Uh-huh. I have never heard nothing that we talked about come back. Amen. She has never heard nothing she said come back. Uh-huh. Come on. Me, me and Will, Pastor Will, you know, we brothers. He can't ever come and say, why did you say such and such such? First he come and say, I'm say because I'm growing and I can't. And I thought you was wrong and I said, so now what? Let's talk about what you're going to fight. You can't beat me. I'm too old for you to beat me. I'm going to fight for anyway. You ain't got a pistol, I do. So which, which you can't, I beat that speed of that bullet. So he already know that. But he already know that I won't say that. I won't discuss. Same thing with Ryan, Pastor Ryan. We have been through a lot of things. In life, can we go? Now, I have a piece of that right there because I'm the boss. Yeah. Yeah, you're the nephew. Don't get me tired of saying me, I'm the uncle, and then you the nephew. So, if you're wrong, I'm telling that you're wrong. Go set yourself down somewhere. But you get the point, and I'm right. All right, God bless America. It's time to graduate from being just a servant, but become companions with God and be a friend so that He can trust you with some things. Huh? All right. Now, you know, Sister Angie never let me drive her car, so I'm, I'm not her friend. But I do know I'm her brother. Amen. Y'all quiet on that part. Yeah. Right there too. Watch this. You know, the, well, I can't tell you. I can't tell you about her. Because let me drive her car. But that was a lie I was about to tell. Because Alicia let me drive her car and take the car and bail it. Let me drive the car and take the car over to New Orleans. Uh-huh. That car was spending more gas than going to small little bit. Oh. <laughs> so let me drive that car and we'll get it out. <laughs> but because we're friends, yeah. you know, Elder Jack and Taking me and let me drive the car. Ella Sandra, you know, she never had a car since we met me. Okay, but she had done other things. Yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm showing you something. Because of our, not me just being a pastor. I remember when she was getting her little, you know, uh, FS food stamp shop. I mean, like, <laughs> she was getting her food stamp. And I was in my house, at the house, and she would come every month, her mother Cotilla. Mm-hmm. This mother Cotilla had another car. Um, whatever the car was. But it would come. And when I got ready to move out that house, uh, Sister Angie, 
I had so much of food that they were buying every month. And I put them in boxes. I said, I'm going to take them down into the church and whatnot. I had so much of food. I had food that she bought every month that was two years, little gang goods, in my cabin. Wow. Every month, she would come, Pastor, I got something for you. I got something for you. And so there's things that I say to her, we laugh and he how about, I haven't heard that. She can't go back and say, you know, I told Pastor something. He never heard it. Why? Because friends are that way. Friends correct you even when you're wrong. Right. Yeah. That's, right. That's, the joke. That's where you find out who your friends are. Right. Yeah. Right. Friends will tell you, nothing. man, what you doing that for? That's just dumb. Mm. Don't do that. That's stupid. Why you did that? Right. And you say, you know me, you know, he ain't my friend no more. Oh. <laughs> Why? Because I corrected you? Right. But that's what God, God said. I don't want you to be a servant. Because right. servants get paid for what they do. Right. And if you don't do it well, you don't get no tip. Right. You're not big on tipping, but you got to make sure you do your job. Right. Yeah. right? But when you become a friend, things happen that you get benefits. You know, uh, Pastor we went to sing in, in Alabama one night. And that was supposed to end on Cascade. He called me about 2 o'clock in the morning, 1 o'clock in the morning. 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock. Well, he called me, he's like, bro, is it okay if I stop by? I'm like, yeah, what you call me that said that for? I just didn't want to knock on the door. He came to the house, and uh, I was standing on Cascade. He was in Alabama somewhere, coming back from somewhere, singing. He came in, came in, got to the foot of my bed, got the blanket, and went to sleep. Well, I thought he was going to hit the floor or get on the sofa. But Sister Wilder, he got up and in fetus position, got to the foot of my bed. When I looked at him, it was, will the dog right at my foot? I moved my foot, you know, I'm used to the dog being there, because she ain't but five pounds. Then I moved the other way, I said, what is that? So I thought it was Pastor Ryan. And I lift my head up, I said, what that Negro doing it in front of my bed? But because of our covenant, our friendship, our brotherhood, y'all ain't saying nothing, that when you're in distress, they'll come by and you should be available. So the covenant with your brother and your sister. Yeah. Uh, watch this. So, 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 uh, he, he brought another situation to my house. Friends. Friends. I'm trying to show you something. Friends. He went to get some, you know, an assignment from Alabama named Chris. Oh. And he going to get this assignment named Chris from, not Alabama, from Carolina. And he said, well, bro, can you do me a favor? What? Can you pick up Chris from the church? Now, sis, he went in Alpharetta at a church. Chris is over there on Campbellton Road. I'm all the way in Riverdale. I don't want to stop off on 166 and go to the Baptist church and pick up Chris. But because that's my friend and my brother. And then that's another little friend that it became a brother. Don't uh -huh. So my covenant says I have to make myself available. Because yeah, covenant says they're friends. So when you become friends, yeah. we go beyond the calls of duty. Yeah. God don't want you to be a servant in 2019. He wants you to become his friend because real friends go beyond the calls of duty. Come on, I'm going to show you this and we get ready to leave it alone. For all things that I have heard of my father, uh -huh. I have been known unto you. Do what, what, this is Jesus talking, right? This is Jesus talking, right? Yeah, he said, whatever I heard of my father, I already let you know because I don't give it to servants, I give it to friends. Yes, yeah. Watch this, I'm about to move this train on. God don't give secrets to servants. He only give them to friends. Jesus didn't give his secrets to a servant. He gave his secrets to friends. Now, Sister Phyllis has been with me for years, you know, 20 years. So, you know, I'm going to say this right now. So if anything happened to me, Nikki already know, Murray know, Ryan know. Now y'all all know. Phyllis is on my, oh, I'm going to say birth certificate. <laughs> my insurance policy anything happened to me she got that policy and she already know what to do so don't nobody need to go and try to fight and act a plump fool like themselves she already know what to do right all right watch this watch this i'm trying to show you something well because of her friendship right because of all that she sold when she was serving right. entitled her to be beneficiary Airy, and her power of attorney over me. Right. Why don't you let your niece go? She didn't serve long enough. Right, right, all right. You, you ain't saying nothing. Well, you got sisters that, yeah, but they ain't saved. They've been got my good old money and turned around here and when I done died and put me in a box and laid me down in the woods somewhere. No, you ain't put me in no doggone woods. You gotta make sure you trust your end, your beginning, and your middle with people that understand you. You know, my castle is 18 camp dope. And you leave it right on the neck and don't 
when the people put all that stuff on me. I don't want all them, them, them cry robes and all that. I don't want y'all coming with all that. Just come and shot and dance that. Amen. Yeah. If it's summertime, put my mink on and let me just sit there like this. Yeah. But you know, my other friend over here, she said, why are you talking like that? Stop talking like this. Little Ed, little, uh, uh, this girl here. She said, stop talking like that because we ain't worried about that. You're not about to die. We both going with the rapture. But girl, keep on believing that we go with the rapture. See, friends don't want you to die. Friends want you to keep on moving and keep on living. And so, and real friends are done hearing me. God said, when I make you my friend, my church never die. You will do everything in your power to make the church stay strong. Amen. So, so she, she, we were talking, she said, you know, I've been telling y'all this some case, something happened, you know. So no one might be wondering, what do you want to listen to? I told y'all, y'all can keep listening. Listen, she said, listen, we're not talking about that. We're not going to talk about that. Uh, child, we, you and I, we're going with the rapture. And I be saying, well, why don't you never say you and Beth go with the rapture? <laughs> she said, me and you are going back to Jesus, Lord, and trumpet in the rapture. <laughs> Barely be sitting there and saying, <laughs> As your conversation. I'm trying to hear, can I help y'all with it? When you become a friend of God, God never allow your end to be unknown because he already know it. Yeah. And what he does, he always gives you the secret things of him. He opens up his heart and gives you stuff that nobody can give you. Give you stuff that your mom and dad and your sisters and brothers can't give you. That's why you can't kill the church that you belong to. That's why you can't destroy the church that you're going to. Because the Bible says he that is friendly will want a friend must show himself what friendly. Because why a friend was thinking closer than a brother. I don't care about nobody say, I love my family, but I got some folks right in this church that have stuck with me better than my own family. I got a mama that lives here and don't come to my church. As good if I was selling crack, raping people, destroying people, you'd be putting money on my book. But now that I'm preaching, you can't even put money in an offering. I got sisters, nieces and nephews that live right here. I didn't know nothing. Church is not what they want to do. But sometimes with friends, I mean, I want to do it. Because you're my friend, I'm still going. Amen. Amen. You know, there's some stuff that I don't like going. I don't like going there about church. Mama, auntie, I don't be like going there about church. I'll be like, listen, is there going to be shopping in there? Is there people going to be, you know, because I don't even want to go in there and all them flamers be in there flaming. You get a church, everybody flaming. Come on, he got eyelashes in there, man. He got green hair, purple. Uh, let's go, child. You know, stop something for the club, stop something for the church. Let me find the stuff that's for the church. Amen. You, you understand? I don't have a problem with your proclivity, but I want to, when we get in church, can we just go to church and say, worship the Lord? When the Spirit of the Lord is on my heart, I would dance like a man. man. Man, we come to church, we, it's, it's Mardi Gras going on. Oh it's Mardi Gras going on. So sometimes I'm just like, I want to go. I want to stay home. I want to go. So when somebody invite me and say, come with me, go be a sister. Because you're my friend, I will do certain things because you're my friend. God says, when you become my friends, I do things that you don't need me to ask me for. When you're my friends, I open doors that you didn't even ask me to open for. I push you in places that you don't even need to go because you're my friend. And if you're going, you're not ready. I'm there with you as a friend, and I'll make you ready while we're going. My God. Let me get this off. <laughs> Come on. Jesus. 16. You have heard not chosen me. Why? Why? Say it again. You have not chosen me. That's what I want you to get. But Listen, I have chosen you. A power north, A power south. God says, you have not chosen me, but I chose you. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Tell your neighbor, and we get ready to get up out of here. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm God's choice. I'm God's choice. Uh, it's not. Choice. Yeah, not, not tell, him, tell somebody, say, even if I want to choose him. Even if I want to choose him. The effect that he chose me will always supersede the thought. No. I chose choosing him. Hallelujah. Y'all just missed what I just said. Just the thought of me trying to choose him, just the mere fact that he made me his choice will supersede my thought of him being, of him being my choice. Why? Because Jeremiah said, I know my thoughts concerning you. I look at a lot of stuff in the Bible. Hold up. I look at a lot of stuff in the Bible, and none of the scriptures can compare to what Jeremiah 29 and 11 says. Jeremiah 29, he said, I know my thoughts concerning you. When I look in the scripture, can't nobody compare against that scripture. We got Jeremiah, he couldn't do it. We got Isaiah, he couldn't do it. We got Elisha and Elijah, he couldn't do it. My God, we got Nahum, come on here, Ezekiel. We got all of Rebecca, all of them, none of them could do it. Because Jeremiah 29 and 11, he said, wait a minute here, church. 
God got a conversation for you. I know my thoughts concerning you. It's good and not evil, but it has an expected end. Tell your neighbor when you become a friend of God. He think about you when nobody else think about you. Ah, look at somebody real good and tell them. Oh, come on here, open up your mouth and shout. Open up your mouth and holler. Open up your mouth and say something. Jeremiah says, I know you're no longer serving now that you're a friend. I know my thoughts concerning you. Open up your mouth and holler say, thank you, Lord. Ah, that you know me. Oh, come on, tell somebody, say, I'm grateful that the man know me. All right, Mammy Green. All right, Mammy Green. All right, Mammy Green. Uh, Mama Green used to say, I know the man. And the man know me. But that's all right. Oh, look at somebody say, I know the man. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell him, say, I know, I know, I know. Come on, say, I know him, I know him. I know him. I know him to be El Shabby. I know him to be Jehovah's Sinkin'. I know him to be Jehovah's Shabby. Oh, come on, tell him, I know, I know, baby. He's a doctor in the sick room. He's a constant friend. So think and think, oh, God. Tell somebody, I know him. Along because I feel God somewhere. I feel a God spell in here. Look at your neighbors. I feel a God spell. Ah, Lord. Look at somebody again and tell your neighbors, say, Oh, neighbor. I feel a God spell. He says, I know my thoughts concerning you. Thoughts of woman of God. He said, but it has in it. Alright, alright. Friends think about you more than some families think. Alright. The biggest fights that have ever been in your life didn't come from a friend. Amen. Amen. Okay, you don't believe me. Let me get out your way. Because y'all don't like gospel. Y'all waiting for this gospel. But I'm trying to give you this gospel. The first fight that you ever won was not when a man hit you at school mm. All right. or a child messed with you in the playground. Yeah. The first fight you won is when you came out the womb Whoa. from your daddy. Hey. Hey. When you came out your mama's womb that your daddy put in there, that was the first battle you won. You came out winning. You came out winning. You came out fighting. You came out a conqueror. Oh, come on here. I'm trying to help somebody. And y'all still looking at me like I'm saying to me, Jesus, when you came out your daddy's womb and went into your mama's womb and you stayed in your mama for nine months, that was your biggest fight. And when you came out, you said, ah, you told the devil I made. Somebody say, yeah, I want that fight, baby. And everything after that is all right with me. Somebody holler at your boy and say, I know that's right. Or tell them, say, I'm a champion. Because I survived it. I'm a champion. Because God made me that way. I'm a builder. Because God made me that way. If I had another service to go to, I would go to it. Because I'm not that millennial preacher. Okay. If somebody say, come on, I'm going to say, Will, come on. You didn't go with me. Yeah. I'm going to say, Ryan, y'all, come on. See, y'all millennials can't go. I'm tired. I got to go home, man. You know, you know, you know, watch this. Because you know what? My son is giving me strength even when I'm weak. When I walked in this room, I was tired. When I walked in this room, my voice was hurting me. When I walked up in here, but it's something about when I get the baton of the kingdom. It's something about when I get in the posture of God. It's something about when I get in the place that God called me. All the tiredness go away. All the nerves in my mind go away. Every thought that I lost on my way here comes back. I'll tell your neighbor the reason why. It's because that book lays out was sorry. Measurements. Yeah, that's good. Okay, all right, all right. 
If a real builder walk in here, mm -hmm. he can tell you how long these pews are. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes, he's a builder. Yeah. Right. A builder will walk in. I will, several times I walked over here, right? So somewhere from here to going over here, the concrete slanted, uh -huh. right? The builder will tell you what's the problem. Right. Amen. He'll cry. Amen. He'll cry. Right. Watch Amen. this. Watch this. A builder will walk up in here and look at this room and say, it's 1,800 square feet. Mm -hmm. right. Whatever the unit square feet. Why? Because he had been experienced right. for so long. Yeah. Once you become a messenger of God, yeah. once you become the apocalyptic of God, yeah. once the revelatory message of God falls into the heart of you and your heart starts beating revelation, you don't really have to study when God steps in. Because everything you study from sometimes go wrong out the door. See, I, I, I tried, y'all. I tried. I got a message this morning that I stayed up all from 4 o'clock this morning and type it on my iPad. And uh, I got to church and opened it up and it said that one doggone thing that was on that piece of paper. But y'all saw the glory when it came in, didn't y'all? I came here and I got it on my phone. My phone was up there. The moment since I stepped off that pulpit and came onto the realm of the floor where all the friends of God is, God changed the message and said, speak to my friends and not to my servants. I wish I had somebody in here. I wish I get somebody and tell your neighbor that if I ever get in a church room service and there's a preacher, there's a friend of God, he's going to change his message to meet my heart. Yeah. Right. 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 Let me say that again. Because you know, Pastor Will is a 60 minute church. He's a 90 minute church. You know, you know his church is for 90 minutes and that's it. He goes in and goes right on out. Until he comes to come there and preach. And the people are going to be sitting there and look like y'all looking. You're going to say, where you going? You're going to sit your behind right there and hear this gospel. Okay. Watch it. Watch what that means. My neighbor called me. But that's all right. I'm just going to sit there and just start praying, Lord, let it go over. And if it go five minutes over, I'm just going to start dancing at the fifth minute. Okay. And I'm a damn to turn and put the PA system up while I'm dancing. Right. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Because see, my praise make movements. Come on, I don't know about your praise. When I dance, something happened. When I hollow, something happened. When I scream, something happened. That's why they even don't want us to hollow. That's why they even don't want us to scream because something happened. When I make noise. So somebody watching me right now, watch, watch, I'm gonna go look at that stuff tonight. Yeah. People are gonna be saying, I'm gonna say block, I got a block ministry. Block, 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 delete, block, block, block. block, block. <laughs> you don't argue with people no more. I'm too important to argue. Alright, sister, wanna leave them? Sister, sis, y'all want me to show you something. I read an article on Facebook. This man was writing for this post. You know, one of the big people. I don't know who he was, but anyway, I don't know the company. I just read that article and it was nice. Alright, I read the article. And the article said this man was a well writer. He write blogs. Not blogs, not blogs. Blogs for missing people. But he write, you know, um, articles. Right. And the article he write, Pastor Will, is for millionaires. Giving millionaire insights of investments, real estate, marketing, whatnot. Watch this. Watch this. Girl, you know what I'm talking about. You <laughs> uh, uh, So, Mama, he, he read the article. But it was so many negative comments at the bottom. So he decided that he's going to go tell the company that he's not going to no longer write anymore because the people don't like what he's writing. Wow. And, and what's happening is they're leaving negative comments and I don't want to be involved with the negative comments. The man of the company said him down. He said, this company marketed to millionaires. Millionaires don't read what, they don't comment what you read, what you write. They add what you write to their lives. But what's this? He said, these people here that's reading the article, they have over six figures a year. Wow. They're in the nine figures. Wow. They're in the millions. The people you are responding to can't even keep a hundred dollars. So he says to the man, he says, find your audience right. and pay attention to the audience that respect you. So the man continued to write, I want to put a pin today to Bishop and, and A Pound North and South. Let's find the audience that belongs to us. Pastor Will, when you open up the church, find the audience that belongs to you. Y'all ain't gonna hear me tonight. Why? It's because you're trying to find the audience because they belong down the street. So they're always gonna be critique everything that you do. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. They will always critique what you do. So you just, if even if you fellowship with another audience, when they're doing all that, okay, for instance, when I go to Pastor Will Church, and he 
gets into this 90 minute service. I'm gonna make sure I just get there on time. Which I'm not only on time anyway. I'm gonna make sure I get on time. So when he says stand, you can stand. See, come on, let's first of all, I'm not gonna wait till I feel it. Because we know we got only nine minutes. So I'm gonna go here, I'm just gonna hit right when he say, one, two, three, get out. I'm just gonna get out of the way. Why? Because I already know he got five minutes of doing that, and then he's gonna sit there down. Right? You know he got the Joel Osteen spirit. Then when he get up and preach, you know, he ain't gonna be preaching like I'm doing. He's gonna be sitting like, you know, and I was looking at my prints, you know, so I'm gonna already make sure I have enough sleep. <laughs> So when I go, that I'm gonna be doing this. <laughs> Watch this. That's my bro. Well, if that's what he's gonna produce, it's not my audience. Right. So I don't kill him for his audience. Right. I just support his audience yeah. because I still know he's in the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So if I go to the mosque and you get down there and the people are saying, let's get on the mat. Mm -hmm. Okay, come on, we can get on the mat. You know what the people do. Yeah. When they go down, say, Oscar, I'm a leg. And they're going to come up and say, Lega, lock When they go down, say, Oscar, I'm a leg. I'm going to say, Jesus, this is the light of the world. Yeah. When they come along and say, For the Lord, they say, It's only different, and all the earth still remains silent. They got to say nothing here. I don't change my sound from the audience. I just participate in whatever situation I am. Paul said, I know how to be content. If I get in the church and everybody shout, y'all know that's my audience, right? That's my audience. If I walk up in this church and then they, they go on in, and listen, I'm kind of putting the Bible down and saying, okay, well, don't stop, now let's go. Uh, <laughs> but if they just worship him, oh, come, let us come. come. That's, that's his church. Be his church. I'm just going there and oh, come, let us come. And in my mind, I'm be hearing music in my head. Melody, ah, yes, sir. Getting ready to bump as soon as they be, if they ever let me in. Why? Don't you argue with somebody that's not your audience. All right, all right, all right. If they're not your audience, you owe them no explanation. If you can call so why don't you talk to a Catholic person about here, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you, bless thy mother, and bless a few, thy mother, Jesus. Let me be ready to argue with why are you arguing with the people that they believe? Let the people alone. Let them alone. Well, the real reason why I shut down the bush and they come in and say, don't do that. What is that? Girl, don't bother us. We didn't bother you when we came to the Catholic Church. So don't bother us when you come to the living well. Because this is a living well over here. Y'all dead. If I go to Jehovah's Witnesses, I'm going to just walk right up in there. You know, they don't sing anyway. They don't do nothing. They just get a ball. Right? Watch this close. He says, you didn't choose me. I need everybody in this room in 2019 to know that you didn't choose God. Yeah, he chose you. Amen. And he chose you because he has a thought concerning you. Amen. Amen. And he listened to me. He said, I chose you because I have a thought about you. I have a mentality concerning you. So when sickness comes, remind sickness, God got a thing of God. Amen. When down comes, wait a minute, devil, hold up one minute. God got a thought for me. Oh, y'all hearing me? Yes, Glory to God. So, the church of the living God today, hear me. God knows the next for our lives. Yeah, yeah. Why are we explaining to people that don't know the next? That's right. See, some people, watch this, woman of God, watch this. Some people only knows the next for them. Mm -hmm. And even in that, they don't have clarity to know. Yeah. Right. I sense. Watch these people. I sense God's doing this. I've been praying, you know, he's seen them, and then you're telling it to me, or you're telling it to us, because you want us to respond and say, this is God. So why are you having a conversation with somebody tell you? Why are y'all doing that? If anybody asks y'all, why are y'all having church in the morning, and then going down to the river, and then have church again? Y'all not tired? No. You know what you tell them? Why do I need to explain to you yeah, right. what God has assigned me to do? Wow. Yeah. Do you have a payroll, a kingdom payroll? My God. Come on. That's right. No, you don't. And since you don't, either you follow or you don't. My God. Don't talk about it if you're not going to help. Be about it. That's right. That's right. That's right. Come on now. If you don't want to show up, don't show up. Yeah, Bishop Ellen, why are you having a church at 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the evening? I'll be tired. Well, you tired that we have church at 8 o'clock in the morning. You better say it now. If, if we have church at 11 o'clock, you walk in slow. You better say it. You tired every time we have church, you already tired. Because tired people don't want to come to church no way. You better say it. Watch this, mother.
Mother Bailey. Watch this, Mother Cotillo. Watch this, Pastor Will. Bishop. Pastor Ryan. I'm watching. <laughs> watch this. R&B singers and rappers travel more than preachers. Amen. Amen. And they're on the road doing tour. Yeah. Sometimes two and three times. Stop it. Weeks at a time, yeah. Two or three or four times a year. Oh, yeah. And that is weeks at the time. Right. Jump on planes, getting off planes, jump here, going there. Yeah. You never hear nobody tell them yeah. why you're right. doing all this traveling. Right. 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 You will never hear them say, you need to rest. Right. Amen. You need to rest. Because they're going to take a toll on your body. And then you'll be old and great with no teeth in the devil's not as funny. I need you. Now you got to die. God bless your mama. But notice something. Notice something. Rappers and all of them can do it. Strippers can do it. Dancers can do it. Yes. Well, they're getting paid to do it. Oh, I'm getting paid too. Yes. The only difference is you can't see my pay. That's right. That's right. Every time I wake up in the morning, I just got paid. Yes. When I realize that both of my lungs is working, both of my kids are working, my liver, my spleen is working, I got paid. Yes. I got paid to do it again. But we got people that will tell me or tell you, you're doing too much in the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. When it's too much, when he says, no man know the day, know the hour, when the son of man shall appear. He's on his way back. We have not all done everything inside of us. Some of us going to die full. Because yeah. we have not been occupying ourselves. The scripture told us to occupy until he come. That doesn't mean preach yourself to death. That doesn't mean that. I'm not saying that. But when God has given you an assignment, you got to be very careful, baby, yeah. of watching people or letting people tell you how to do that assignment. Right. Right. That's right. Lesson learned, sir. People going to tell you how to do it, and then they're saying people are going to be out there though. Right. Yeah. Right. Yo, I've been doing this for 30 plus years. For 30 plus. I never forget one time my mama came to church and cut up. Child, by God, get out of here. Listen, I don't have the energy. I don't have the energy. See, when I look at this Apple Watch, thank you, Mike. He's got MJ put the Mickey Mouse on me. Yes. He was going through, I said, MJ, which one do you want to see? Yeah. This right here, Mickey Mouse. I said, well, I ain't no kid. He said, but I am. <laughs> That's my three-year-old granddad. So I look at him. Um, so somebody was talking to me about something. I said, every time I look at my watch, I don't see death. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Look at my watch, he's asking, what can I help you with? <laughs> Ooh, y'all just missed this revelation I just got right here. I looked at my watch and said, I don't see that. It just asked me, what can I help you with? Uh, help me to get some more money and be blessed beyond measure. So we're going to keep it. I wish I had somebody in here. I was telling mother, I was talking to the brother, and he says, I said, listen, when I look at my watch, I don't see that it did it again. Don't you say talking? Yes, it is. I said, when I look at my watch, I don't see that. And it says, oh, uh, just said again, what I can you with that? I'm trying to give you a revelation. The man was talking about sickness and death and all kind of crazy stuff. I said, when I look at my watch, I don't see that. I see time. My God. And as long as I see time, I have accountability and availability. And I'm going to participate in what I'm available in and what I'm accountable for. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. So guess what? I'm getting ready to be here every second and fourth Sunday. Ready, whether you come or not, I'm going to still be here. Whether you like it or not, I'm going to still be here. If you don't dance, we just don't dance with the music. Because we're going to put an ox on the PA system and just get the, the, uh, the uh, 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 one of them, the, the, what you call it, the boy? Uh, oh, he didn't make right. One of the shouting tracks, and we're just going to dance on it. All right. Come on, Trey. We're going to dance on the track. Why? you got to make the devil look like a fool. Right. And I believe if God is expanding, right. like he says, yes. then we have to be available Real for that expansion. Right. Because watch this, woman of God. You never know who will come in the room and God will use you to heal them. Because you're so busy complaining and trying to figure out what is it, what is it. Why are you annoying if you're going to complain? Just sit and be an usher. Matter of fact, stay home. Because even ushers are anointed. Amen. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house. Of God. Come on. If you're an usher, you got to be anointed. Because you're the first person that they can smile. God bless you. How are you doing? You may be the love that was your husband and stop them from killing themselves. Amen. Are you me? Well, I don't have time for that. But what time, what, what do you have time for? 
Are you hear me? I'm asking y'all a question today, tonight. If God is calling for expansion this year, what do you have time for? for? Oh, if God says this is a year of expansion, mm -hmm. what do you have time for? Yes. Expansion. expansion. To be available and accountable oh, to expand. Yes. And if God says we yes. must expand. Yes, Lord. Amen. This is January. The first Sunday on this side of the town. You don't know what God's going to do. Amen. Now, your assignment is now God pray. Begin to pray so that help. Watch this. If you can't be available in every second and fourth Sunday, then your job is to start praying. God, seek help. Yes. Right. Send help in the sanctuary. Yes. Send the strength that they need. Yes, Lord. Begin to pray for the growth. Pray for the development. Yes. Don't always cast words out in the atmosphere because you are anointed. Yes. What are you going to do that for? Watch your words. Don't let these words fall on stony grounds. Yes, let your words be of good seeds and let them fall on good soil yes. and they can bring forth much fruit. Yes. So they would have a building. They would have a uh, people. Yes. So then when we come by, you can say, well, they got everything that they need. So we can get here about 10 minutes late. They're already in operation. Yes, Amen. Not Amen. Because you're needed and you're available and God's calling you to the task. We got to wait for you. Come on. Kingdom work is more important than any other work that we do and we're available for. Amen. Y'all, some of us are more available to stuff that we don't need to be available for. Amen. Amen. We spend more time on Facebook, Instagram, yes, yes, yes. in the mall, beauty salons. Now, y'all some stylists. Y'all, those young here that get y'all hair done, y'all know it takes a long time. Yeah. It takes a long time. You got to sit. Mom, she got them finger waves in. I know she didn't just put them finger waves in where got up and walk out the door. She had to put that. She had to wash it. She had to put the thing in it. Somebody had to finger wave it and then sit under that dryer. Right. For about 45 minutes, didn't you, money? So you had 45 minutes. At least. That's one hour portion. That's, a, that's three, four portions of the first hour of church. That's right. Are you hearing me? And if we have a two hour services, what did you say? Half of my service. Yes, half. See? 90 minutes. 45, the next 45, and we continue to stretch your own time. You, you hear what I'm saying? Now, those of you that got to get all the. Are y'all getting my point? It's time to build. It's time to establish. I am not in competition with nobody. I'm just doing what the Lord told me to do. Clap your hands all over the place.